Well, from his electrifying and Tony winning turn as the genie in Aladdin to stealing scenes in Hamilton, James Monroe Eichelhart is one of Broadway's brightest stars. And now he's lending his voice to a cause very close to his heart. All right, let's get started talking about all the wonderful things that you have going on and all that's happening in your life right now. Let's start with Broadway. Yes. So you were in Hamilton when yes, the shutdown happened, right? The pandemic. How are you feeling with the reopening of Broadway on the horizon? I am so excited. I'm so excited. There's that, uh, there's that moment in, in, a, in a person's life. I almost said the actor's life. No, a person's life. Where like you're doing a job and you know your job is good. You know you have a good job. Right. But you start getting complacent. And you start walking into the office going, <laughs> man, you know. I could do other things. I could do other, I could go other places. They just, they don't know. And then all of a sudden you don't have it for a year. You're like, I can't wait to be back. Oh my God, look, my desk, it's the same. Oh, look at you, you used to irritate me. You're a wonderful person, I love you. That's how I feel about getting back to Broadway. I'm like, I never ever felt Broadway was terrible, but I was always like, oh, eight shows a week. All right, I love what I do, but boy, right. I sure am tired. I wish I could have a vacation. Now that I've had one, I can't wait to get back to work. I'm like, please, can we get on that eight show a week schedule and sing and right. dance and rap? Let's let's do this. So I am so happy that we get to do this. And also I'm so happy for all of my colleagues who literally, we, we were all taken by surprise, but some of my colleagues, mm -hmm. it was take, you know, just a complete surprise, unprepared, unready, all these things. So the fact that we're all getting back to a little bit of normalcy, and also this moment for the people who come to see the show, we can take them away from all the craziness they've gone through for just a little while to just be entertained because that's what we do. We entertain. So I can't wait to get back to it. Yeah, I love that. It's so funny. You talk about that, like, you know, the desk that you, well, the desk could be bigger. The water could be colder or this yeah. or that. Now it's like, whatever. I'm, right. good. <laughs> hey, look, I'm good. Especially when you've been working, especially when you've been at home. Right. You at home, you're like, you know what? I sure would like to work someplace where my cat can't walk across my desk while I'm trying to do something. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Trying to, trying, to, trying to work on this script and the cat's like, did you step on my iPad? Did you erase everything I just wrote? How did you even step on that button? Oh my God. <laughs> or so they hit true. send. They hit send before the email's done. You're like, no. Oh, Jesus. Now I got to write why. And then you have to write. I did not mean to say and, and dot, 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 dot. My cat stepped on my, it's so. I just, that makes me think about the lawyer uh, in that viral video where he was like, I, I'm not a cat. I could not watch oh. that enough. <laughs> I watched that over and over and over again because it, it was just one of those great moments of that will live forever. It's going, you know, every time you want to laugh, I'm going to go back to that moment that oh my God. Dad, couldn't take his face off. <laughs> it was just beauty. Mm -hmm. When you've been keeping busy this past year, including organizing that huge The Nightmare Before Christmas concert, what was it like for you pulling all of that together in the middle of a pandemic? Um, it was fun and absolutely scary and so fulfilling. I've mm -hmm. always wanted to get into that side of the business. You know, I've always yeah. been on the stage and I thought it'd be fun to be on the other side of the table to produce something. And when you have a great, when you have a good idea like that, um, the fun part is you don't know everything that you have to do when you first think you're like, yeah, I'll do that. That sounds like fun. And because <laughs> you're naive, you don't know all the things that are going to happen or could possibly happen. So when they happen, you'd have to think on the fly. And I've learned. Uh, a lot from that. It was so much fun to get my friends together to perform. And it was also fun to be able to give back to uh, the Lymphoma Research Foundation and also to the Actors Fund. Uh, but the uh, the Actors Fund I've worked with for many years, but I really wanted to get into work with the Lymphoma Research Foundation because my wife was diagnosed with lymphoma. She is a cancer survivor. And it was just some way to, you know, when you're a husband or when you're a spouse dealing with your partner, having something, going through something like this, all you can kind of do is just like, support but just be there they have to go through it so i felt like i was actually doing something of like using the talents that i have been blessed with and saying okay let me use this to give back to help other people who may be going through what my wife went through so it was a lot of fun also i just love singing those songs and it was just so much fun to let that disney let us do it and we all just lived our best childhood moments acting silly singing that concert yeah, that makes it work so much more rewarding when it has a personal con connection to it and so much more meaning um, behind it. You know, you're raising oh, yeah. money for such worthy causes and then something that's so personal to you because of your wife. How is your wife doing? 
She is doing uh, very, very well. She's doing very well. How do you go from dealing with, you know, something like a lymphoma diagnosis, right? And going through the treatment for that to saying, you know what? I want to get out there and raise awareness. Um, I want to get out there and do the work because I totally respect someone saying, you know what? I just want to go through this journey privately. And then people who are like, let's get out here. I I appreciate both. What was you all's journey to making that decision? Um, we were doing, we were, it was during COVID and I told my wife, I said, you know, I just, I want to do something. I feel like I want to give back. I mean, I know, I know I want to give back. How do I do that? And I said, you know, what I know is performing, what I know is entertainment. So I want to do a concert. And she said, well, if you're going to do a concert, you know, right now people are, um, down people are broke people need something to be entertained by but if you're going to do it raise money for something and i said you're right what you know let's let's think of something she goes i, I want to do cancer research and i was like all right let's yeah. do that and so i looked around had some friends and we all noticed and uh you know came upon the lymphoma research foundation i started looking at what they did i started looking at their history and i started reading more about them i was like yeah this is it this is the one this is the one because i had a friend of mine her husband had lymphoma twice and we would we be we've been friends for years, and so when Don got it, you know, when Don was diagnosed with it, we went to them to lean on them, and they were telling us that they went to people to lean on them when they went through it. So seeing what the, the LRF was doing, I was like, I want to be a part of that. So when someone needs to lean on somebody, we could be there. And like I said, my wife is not one for being on, on camera or in front of people, but for this thing, she said, you know what, I will give up my you know my issues with being in front of people to do this because this is important. And so that that's what did it, you know. Yeah. You know, you are someone who just exudes joy and I tell you, you have so much reason to to be bitter, to be frustrated. How do you how do you find that um joy on a regular basis? Maybe you don't feel it every day, but where do, where does that come from? Where do you pull from for that? I I won't lie. I do not feel I I shouldn't say that. I don't feel happy every day, mm-hmm. but my cousin years ago told me, I will never let anybody steal my joy. My joy mm-hmm. is always with me. That is a shine, that is a light that's inside me that will always be there. And I think it just comes from the fact that I know that I'm, I, people always say hashtag blessed, but I'm not trying to use it as a, you know, just like a thing to say, but I am blessed. I mean, there are so many people, if you really look at your life and you look at what's going on, you are truly blessed. Are you, are you breathing? Do you have clothes to wear? Do you have food in your refrigerator? Do you have a roof over your head? Are your friends, your friends? Are your family, your family? No matter, and you can either go, you can go, you can always go into that branch of, well, my sister or my brother or my cousin and everybody got crazy family members, but as a whole, is your family (laughs) okay? When you guys get together, do you know what's going to happen and nobody's going to die? Yeah. You're, you're good. You're actually oh. good. When you think about what you need in, you know, as opposed to what you want, when you think about what you need, you have everything you need, you're fine. Mm. And maybe you can get down to the brittle stuff. Is your phone working? Is your Wi-Fi working? Do you mm. still have email? Can you play stupid games on your phone when you're in your car or something else? Do you have earphones that people won't talk to? Do you have the things that you need to live life? If you do, then there's no reason for you to be well, I, life is just actually no, because there are people out there without any of that. There are people out there without any of that. And now that we have the internet, we can see worldwide how blessed we truly are. And when you look at that, you really can't go outside and start complaining about the little things you don't have because you are blessed with so much. So that kind of keeps me going. The yeah. fact that I get to live this life and I, I am not, you know, sick. I don't have crazy things happening in my life. And the things that are happening are really, really first world problems that when you really look at it, you're like, you know, I'm a, I'm a be okay. So yeah. that's, that's how I get up and look at it. And then on top of that, I do get to live my dream. You know, I still have friends who I, and you know, you say all that. And then I have friends or associates who don't get to live their dream. I do. Yeah. I, all I ever wanted to do when I was a kid was to do this 
was to sing and dance and act and be on stage and make people laugh and be silly, to be silly and get paid for it, to do the things that Mrs. Moore in my elementary school class said you would not get paid for. Mr. Eichelhart, you won't get paid for being silly. I get paid <laughs> for being silly. And boy, I couldn't wait to throw it in her face. But I was grown and it was terrible. You can't go to an old woman and throw it in her face because that's not right. You shouldn't do that. I got over it, but I didn't say it. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that I get to live my dream is what keeps me going. I have a beautiful wife. I have a beautiful family. I have a beautiful mm -hmm. life. And even if I wasn't, if I was, I always tease my wife, but if I was working at Target and not that anything wrong working at Target, please, I love yeah. everybody at Target. I'm, I'm there all the time. If I was working at Target and I was doing community theater at night, I would still be happy because yeah. I'd be, I'd have, I'd have, be, I'd have my rent paid, but I'd still get to sing and dance and act. You know, because I love it. And I do it because I love it. I just happen to get paid for it. And that's a very long answer for that. So I'm sorry about that. Listen, I was about to say, turn to your neighbor and say he is preaching real good <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm about to bring up the organ and say the doors <laughs> of the church are open. <laughs> that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Oh my God, I love that. that that's so inspirational um, and very well said. So I got to ask you about This Week in Marvel, the podcast that you do. Some people may not be familiar with it. Tell us yes. what it's all about. So there's a wonderful podcast uh, called This Week in Marvel and Agent M, Mr. Ryan Panagos and Lorraine Sink and I are the hosts of this show. And we basically talk about everything Marvel that happened that week. So, you know, to all the Marvelites out in the world, we talk about everything from all the comic books to the video games, to the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, to every action figure that comes out. And we talk about all things Marvel nerdy things and it is fantastic. I've been able to interview my favorite WWE superstars like The Undertaker and Shawn Michaels. We've been able to interview the guy who wrote The Incredible Hulk from the 1980s. We've been able to talk about all kinds of wonderful shows, all the nerdy shows I watch on Disney Plus, and that's what we do. It's on Sirius XM Radio and any other podcast place you can get your podcast. You can listen to This Week in Marvel. And uh, I tell you, being able to be a nerd at 46 years old and still being okay is like the coolest thing ever. Like I'm a grown person and I can look, I was like, you know what I do? I talk about Spider-Man for a living. I mean, it's coming, <laughs> come on, it's so much fun. So I love uh, it. If you want to talk about that kind of stuff or Marvel nerd stuff, go to This Week in Marvel, uh, our podcast and you will not be disappointed. What do you think about the news with Issa Rae joining the Marvel universe? I think it's amazing. I mean, the great thing is, I always tell other actors or some like people like, you know, I want to do so many things. I want to do everything. I'm like, if you focus on what you love to do, it's amazing how those other things you love will come find you. Come on. It's a, you know what I mean? I, I, all I ever wanted to do was to, to do cartoon voices, but I, I knew I had to do Broadway. That's what I was focusing on. And then focusing mm -hmm. on Broadway, I've been able to do several cartoons because they came and saw me and they're like, oh, you want to do that? Really? That's how I got to write a, a comic book for Marvel. I was doing Hamilton. The guy, a, a wonderful writer named Dan Slott came to see the show. He's he's the guy who created the, Spar the, the Spider-Verse. Have you ever heard of the Spider-Verse? He created yeah. that in oh. the Marvel comics. He's the consultant on the movie. He's the consultant on the game. But he created the Marvelverse for the comic books. And he and I were talking. He was like, I know some guys at Marvel. You should talk to them. That's how that happened. But you got to focus on where you are, what you're doing, and be really good at that. It's amazing how the other things you want to do seem to find you. Because, you know, people go, you can do that. Well, can you do this? You're like, damn straight, I can do that. I want to do that, too. I can do it. Speaking of things finding you, you were just a clue on Jeopardy? Yeah, listen. Come on. <laughs> that, okay, that one got me only because I, I usually watch Jeopardy, but this one night, I was reading a script. I had something to do. My wife was working. I'm reading the script. And all of a sudden, my phone starts blowing up. <laughs> and they're like, you're, you're an answer on Jeopardy. I was like, I am? <laughs> and one of the first guys that told me was another Marvel writer, a guy named Peter David. So the Hulk in all of the, Mar the MCU, that version of the Hulk was created by this guy named Peter David. And mm -hmm. Peter David calls me and goes, do you realize that you're an answer on Jeopardy. I was like, what are you talking about? And all my friends started sending me videos of it. And we, my wife and I lost our mind because it wasn't like, you know, some random thing. They were like, James Iglehart plays this. And I was like, and the, and it was, and it was Anderson Cooper. It was Anderson Cooper. And he said my name correctly. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was like, Anderson Cooper said my name correctly. Because you know, my name was Iglehart and people mess it up all the time. So the fact that he said, I was like, I was like, you know, hey, 
My friends used to say, you know, shoot for the moon, you may catch a star. I don't know. I'm I'm shooting for more than I'm shooting for the moon now because things yeah. keep happening. So yeah, Do why not? I love it. Why not? Well, I want to let everybody know that you can follow James on social media for all his latest work and for more info on the Lymphoma Research Foundation, head to lymphoma.org.